Someone just went on national television and called Kevin Durant more valuable to the Warriors dynasty than Stephen Curry. Also, Tracy McGrady said that Curry wasn't even on the same level as LeBron James, Magic Johnson, or Kobe Bryant. Using those takes, and many more dumb ones which you'll see in this video as fuel to his fire, Friday night's Game 4 in Boston saw the chef become the first player ever to record 40 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 threes in the confines of an NBA Finals. Here's how Curry's fooled everyone, leaving the advanced metrics and top analysts looking not just dead wrong, but embarrassingly silly. This seeming to be all-time great NBA Finals in the making is now locked at 2, making ESPN's BPI, which is short for Basketball Power Index, who initially gave Golden State a 12% chance to win these finals, pretty naive. On this channel, while I didn't predict a winner for these finals in my preview, I'm not ashamed to admit that Boston's been my pick long before the finals to go all the way. That was no slight at the Warriors, it was just the circumstances each team were dealing with at the time that I made that prediction. Following Golden State evening this series at 1, I made a video breaking down why Curry was more valuable than Durant during the dynasty years, in my humble opinion. However, some analysts with night and day more credibility than yours truly, in a Hall of Famer T-Mac, and even one of Curry's peers, in a player he's beaten in the playoffs before, CJ McCollum, haven't been so quick to give Curry that type of praise. After Golden State's Game 3 loss, the 2016 Most Improved Player of the Year and current New Orleans Pelicans guard said, quote, There's no debates about who was the better player on that team. We know it was Kevin Durant. Steph knows it was Kevin Durant. Draymond, deep down, he knows it was Kevin Durant. That take from CJ wasn't the only one disregarding the chef after Boston went up 2-1, as a seven-time All-NBA player in McGrady had this to say, we know that Steph is like the three-point god, but when it comes to putting him with Michael Jordan and these guys that won that level of championships, Kobe Bryant and Magic Johnson, I don't know where to rank him. I know he's pretty high, but I think those guys are in a different class than Steph based off all that. They're on championship teams. KD came and joined the Warriors and became the best player and helped Steph win two more championships, but Steph wasn't the best player on that team. For my argument on Curry versus Durant, Click the link in the description or the top right of this video on your screen right now. Before we further look at the record-breaking all-time NBA Finals performance like we did a little bit yesterday right after Game 4, there's some more mainstream, utterly ignorant opinions dismissing the legacy of our generation's most revolutionary player in Stephen Curry. But unlike the T-Mac and CJ takes, they took place long before these finals. Here was the former first take analyst Max Kellerman being a prisoner of the moment and disrespecting Steph in the process. Would you say Trey Young's ceiling is actually higher than Steph's? Yeah. In the playoffs, which is the only thing I care about. How many Western Conference Finals? Steph Curry, what is he, 32, 33 now? How many Western Conference Finals he's played in? Five. You know how many Western Conference Finals games he's played in? 27, by my count. How many times he scored 48 points in a, West, in a, in a conference final? Zero. Speaking of first take, last summer when Curry was about to re-up on his well-deserved four-year $215 million Supermax, here's what a few of ESPN's finest had to say about the amount of rings Curry would get under that contract. We, we, the question is, how many titles in the next four years? So we go, we go, y'all go sit on first take. You and Dominique Foxworth are going to sit on first take and say that Steph Curry will not be in the conversation for a championship yeah. in the yeah. next four yeah. years. Steph and his dubs are now two wins away from making those clowns look dead wrong and securing his fourth career NBA championship. In my opinion, whether Golden State wins or loses this series against Boston, Steph should get the finals MVP. Curry's been unquestionably the best player in this series. His titanic 43-point performance to salvage the Warriors from a potential 3-1 hole on 26 shots, 7 of 12 on twos, 7 of 14 on threes, and 71.8% true shooting was the latest in a string of performances that each deserve their own place in history, but this one rightfully claims its place in a different stratosphere. In four games during these finals, he's averaging 34.3 points on an otherworldly shooting split of 50-49-86, his 66.4% true shooting mark 
harkens back to his unanimous MVP campaign, where he put up a 66.9% true shooting mark. Yesterday, we looked at every bucket from the mid-third quarter on into the clutch, but what we didn't evaluate was Steph's early dominance. Entering the film room on that bit of wizardry, for some reason Jalen Brown doesn't force himself onto Steph in transition, leaving Horford on an island, and Big Al gets hit with two elusive step backs in a row, a swift, saucy dribble combo. After getting Brown onto him with a screen from Otto Porter, Boston decides not to switch this next on ball from Wiggins and pays the price for it big time as Jalen's slow to rotate and Steph pulls up in the face of that late rotation. Naturally, Boston's pressure increases after that, but working off a of baseline inbounds, Steph perfectly utilizes that gravitational pull to bait a step back on Derek White as he catches the pass from Poole, jab steps to his right, drives to his left, embraces the contact from White, and somehow flips it over Robert Williams III, all in one motion. Hedging clearly isn't working anymore for Boston, as Steph manipulates Smart and Horford by blowing past them in this pick and roll. After that, a dribble handoff with Looney sees Curry drop Brown into contact and finish for the and one. In the Warriors' patented play, which the Celtics should have scouted out by now and shut down, which is split action, as Clay and Otto space the floor, Draymond gets the pass from Wiggins in the post, Wiggins goes to set a flare screen for Curry, and the bank happens to be open. How about another split action for your trouble, this time with Wiggs in the post and Looney as the screener? White makes a solid contest, but he's far behind Curry at this point to make an impact, and the GOAT three-point shooter executes. Steph then closed out the show in dramatic fashion, which we looked at in yesterday's post-game recap. In terms of the names Curry was among with his performance, Steph joined MJ, Shaq, and LeBron as the only players to score 43-plus points in multiple finals games over the last 50 years. He now owns the highest true shooting percentage of all time in the NBA playoffs, just ahead of Kevin Durant. Meanwhile, Michael Jordan in 1991, Kevin Durant in 2017, and Steph Curry in 2022 are the only players ever to average 30 points per game on 50-45 shooting splits in a final series. Thing is, Jordan and Durant were both in their primes at age 28 when they did that, while Curry's doing it much deeper into his career, showing his longevity at age 34. The chef also became the first player in NBA history to have five plus three-pointers made in four consecutive NBA Finals games. Displaying his heart, after the point guard suffered an ankle injury on Wednesday night, he battled through it to cover 15,259 feet of ground in Game 4, nearly 2,000 more than his playoff average, along with his regular season average. Clay Thompson put it best on Curry, saying, quote, The things he does, we kind of take it for granted from time to time, but to go out there and put us on his back, I mean, we've got to help him on Monday. Clay also said in a response to a separate question, quote, Shocking he wasn't a first-team All-NBA guy, but whatever. In your opinion, outside of Steph, who deserves the second most amount of credit for the Warriors Game 4 win? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Swu, who says the best part about Steph's performance has to be his efficiency in the biggest game of the season when the team needed him most. Steph stepped up and showed us all he's an all-time great and one of the greatest finals performers of all time. His supporting cast in Clay, Poole, etc. were far from their best, but this man literally put the team on his back and single-handedly leveled the series. That's the activity of a top 10 player of all time. Go argue with the wall. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.